Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the Break the Cycle website, which you may be looking at. In this brief video, I want to introduce the gateway to Lesson 1. Lesson 1 is one of eight non-profit self-study lessons that comprises this website. Lesson 1 has to do with discovering who are you? Another way of asking that question is, who really runs your life? Do you know? Lesson 1 will show you how to answer that question in a way that is probably surprising and different for you. The gateway to Lesson 1 is in how do you define your, quote, personality, unquote. You sus I suspect you would say, well, I have a personality, yes, and it's a, a single thing. An idea that's hundreds of years old, but it's not very widely known these days, is that average personalities, like yours, are comprised of many subcells or parts. Each subself has a unique talent, like the player on a sports team or the member of an orchestra. So if you accept that tentative idea, then that raises the question, well, who are my subcells? Who are they? And more importantly, who's leading them? Who's making my decisions among these players? Um, if you accept the idea that your personality is like a group of entities, all of whom are talented, each one of which has its own view of the world, may or may not like the other entities, may team up with them, may fight them, may ignore them, lots of dynamics that go on among these subselves, just like people. Um, one, there, there are three groups of parts or subcells that comprise your personality. Uh, by function, the first group of parts can be called your inner children, plural, not inner child, inner children. Many people have, from various ages, subcells who have the characteristics of an angry child, a sad child, an abandoned child, a curious child, a playful child, a loving child, a lonely child. There are a number of inner children in every person. Some are quiet, some are very active. The second group of subcells exclusively is devoted to protecting those inner children of yours. As a group, they can be called guardians or protectors. There are lots of different types of these. Here's a couple of classic examples that most people have, including me. One guardian part can be called the procrastinator. He tries to help out kids avoid pain, shame, guilt, loss, unhappiness by saying, Oh, well, let's do that later. He gives you those thoughts, he or she, that's your procrastinator. Another part, guardian part, can be called the magician. That unique, talented subself says, I don't think it's a good idea to recognize reality. For instance, that I just made a huge mistake. So I'm going to create thoughts and mental pictures that say, no, that wasn't my fault. That was their fault. That's your magician. How about, do you have a part that might be called a perfectionist? One that says, oh, you think that's a, that's a good painting? You just finished an oil painting? That's a piece of trash. You could do that so much better. Scrap it and do it again. Do you have a part like that? Many of us do. Another classic subself in the Guardian Department can be called the controller. Another one is the peacemaker. Another one, try this. Do you have someone that is a people pleaser? Who gives you the instinct, the urge, the thoughts, the motivation. I've got to please other people in order for them to like me. you have somebody like that? These are typical examples of guardian subselves. Everybody has a unique roster of guardians. No two people are the same. You are unique. So do you want your inner kids and your guardians to run your life? 
guess what? There is a third group of parts that can be collectively called managers. They run your life when the inner kids and the guardians are quiet. When there's no inner conflict, inner hassle, inner crisis. Your managers are free to run your life. Your managers typically include talented ones like a creative subself who sees new ways of doing things or producing something that's never existed before. You have an organizer. You have a historian, someone that is in charge of your memories. Most of all, you have, among the manager parts you have, everyone has one of these, in my experience, you have someone that can be called your true self, capital S. Have you ever known in your life, in a class or a committee or a team that you have belonged to, have you ever known an exceptionally gifted leader, someone who was universally respected by the members of that group, who looked up to him or her, said, I'm willing to follow you. I trust you. I trust your judgment. Lead. I'll follow. Have you ever known somebody like that? A surprising number of people, when I've asked them in my work as a parts therapist, which is what I've been doing for many years, a surprising number of people say, gee, you know, I can't think of anybody like that. So maybe you can, maybe you can't. My point here is, if you have known a really talented leader, male, female, young, old, someone who inspired you, who solved problems, who laid out goals, who motivated you, uh, who led people and was honest and trustworthy, that those characteristics are true of your true self. I propose that you have a sub-self who is just like that, and if left alone, will do an excellent job in every single situation leading your other talented sub-selves. Would you like that? The problem is this. For many of us, because of our childhood experiences and later on as adults, some sub-selves do not trust the true self, our true self, and will not follow her or him. They take us over. The man who taught me this concept, Richard Schwartz in Chicago, said they blend with our true self. They take us over. So if we have, for instance, an angry child, he activates uh, and takes us over. He blends with the true self. And guess what? The whole person then becomes, quote, angry. The person who is blended or taken over by a false self takes on the thoughts and the feelings and the views and the characteristics of the sub-self that take over the true self. Have you known people that have, quote, different personalities or different moods? One day she's really up and happy and joyful. The next day she's down and heavy and gloomy. I wonder why that is. It's because of her sub-selves. Guess what? We all have moods and changes like that our subcells are ceaselessly dynamic, and guess what? They are all trying to take care of us and help us survive. There is no such thing as an evil subself, in my opinion. So, there are inner children who bring us emotions and a very naive view of the world. They're very reactive, just like real kids. There are guardian subcells or protectors who solely spend 24-7 looking out for the inner children and will do anything they can to protect, soothe, and comfort them. Many times the inner kids and the guardians don't know or don't trust the skilled, talented manager subcells. The manager subcells include one who can be called your true self. When any guardian plus inner child take you over, that can be called a false self. So what? This is an interesting concept. Gee, that's, so what? What can you do with this? What you can do with this is pretty powerful. If you have habits, like for instance, smoking, smoking tobacco, how about overeating? 
How about being too shy? How about being often depressed? How about being confused and without direction? Most life problems, I would tentatively say all personal life problems, can be resolved or minimized, reduced, if you start to know who are my subcells in each group, who are my inner kids, who are the managers, who are the guardians. Make a list of them on our website and lesson one will show you how to do that. Once you've done that, identify the specific subcells that are causing you to, say, be forgetful. Uh, or be constantly late, or to lie, or various annoying or troublesome habits that most of us have. Identify the subcells that cause those, and then use a technique called inner family therapy, which is what I do. It's just like family therapy or group therapy with actual people. You go in and harmonize them, and one of the objectives of inner family therapy is to get everybody to know everybody and get the kids and the guardians to trust and follow your true self. When that happens, you can experience some beneficial life changes that last. But that's the subject of another video. My purpose here has been to introduce you to the idea at that your personality as a normal unique person is comprised of subcells. They're busy all the time. They cause your moods, your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviors. They affect your body. It would be good, I propose, if you decided to get to know who is really running my life, my true self or a false self. Stay tuned. I encourage you to study lesson one in the Break the Cycle website. To be continued.